a 16-year-old with a serious temper. Shut up! You had your time to speak, now it's my turn. And a kid from the coast who does whatever he wants. I don't ask if I can do something, I tell them. Are about to get a dose of discipline from two of the world's strictest parents. We definitely believe that corporal punishment or spankings are appropriate. It's you about you becoming a better person. Will a week with strict Christians turn our teens into angels? Oh, I hate dicks. They're just so strict and so annoying. Or will tough yeah. rules and punishments make them madder than hell? Who the fuck do you think you are, Kyle? Honestly. <laughs> Sixteen-year-old Jess is one long flight away from meeting her new strict parents. Hang on to your handbag while you're here. Shh. Do you want a hand for that? For her real mum, Jenny, it'll be a welcome break. Jess needs to realise that she doesn't have it so bad at home, that she's actually got it pretty good. I don't think they'll be able to change me. It took me 16 years to get like this. I just don't like authority because authority is being told what to do. She'll just do what she wants, when she wants. Jess, come on up. Come on! Come on. No, I'm not doing anything to you, to the lawyer! Jessica! Ah! Jess! I smoke cigarettes. Smoking too much pot, drinking too much alcohol, not working, not studying. I tell her I hate her, I call her a slut. So go shove it up your ass and do all your jobs yourself. She actually collapsed one day in a park from too much substance. <laughs> I nearly passed away of a liver, liver failure. For a moment there I thought, oh my God, I'm going to lose her. And then when she was feeling better and we were released from hospital, she just wanted to go out again. <laughs> if you just keep doing what you want to do, they'll finally just give up. Jess will be travelling with 16-year-old Kyle well, from Queensland Sunshine Coast. So how much money do you think you want, Kyle? What? So how much money do you want? How much am I getting? Ever since he was three years old, he's lived with his grandparents, and they're beginning to wonder if they've spoiled him rotten. We want to see an improvement in his attitude. We want to see him a better guy. We hope that something good comes out of this. I don't know. Everyone else is happy with me, so why change for two people? I don't ask if I can do something, I tell them. Sometimes you'll just go and look around, he's not here. Like, they can't stop me. Like, if they grab me, then I'll end up throwing a punch at them. Don't touch me, fuck off. Fuck off. You think you're an fuck off. Sometimes they deserve everything they get. Slow down. Kyle, slow down. You're doing 70 in their 80 zone. Shut up. No, I won't go over and you can get out. Schoolwork's not a problem. He doesn't seem to bring any home. No, oh, no, I was in suspended heats. Yeah! Yeah! We had this really fat girl at our school. She's so fat. I got suspended like three times from picking on her. Are you listening? No. Checking the birds out. No. I used to bring home like a lot of different girls like every week, and she's always scared that I'm going to get her pregnant or something. And different ones. Dozens of them. My mum, I'm pissed off at her because she failed. She was very heavily into heroin. In the end, the Department of Community Services come in and took them away. We handed a business card and two kids. And we're trying to say, you know, we've given a lot to you. Just give a little back. I don't expect much of Kyle at all. Just get your menace back and respect back. Give her a hug. Something you don't do very often. Go on, give her a hug. He's a bugger of a kid. Have a great time. Bye. See ya. Yeah, bye. I don't even think I got away. <laughs> See you guys. Have a great time. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. The teenagers are being sent to Noblesville, Indiana, a small town voted the best place in America to raise your kids. 
and they'll be living with the Gibsons, an extremely conservative and religious family. We truly feel you have to have love and discipline. One without the other just doesn't work. We definitely believe that corporal punishment or spankings are appropriate. Jonathan Gibson is the pastor at his local church. And together with Kathleen, proud parents to Canyon, Jocelyn, Christian, and Jillian. Well, I'm not allowed to ride my bike around the neighborhood. I'm only allowed to ride where my mom can see me. It's important to be a strict parent. Kids need to feel secure. It's going to be way too low on you. Definitely not. If I'm not sure about whether I think it is appropriate or not, we'll take it to her dad and then let him make the decision. These parents control what their kids watch on TV, the music they listen to, and they have all of their computer passwords. I just go on here and check to see what is going on. They know that we can search their MySpace at any time and make sure that they're not getting any filth or any derogatory type material. You got four kings yet, Canyon? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it's a far cry from what our Aussie teenagers are used to. But the Gibsons want to show Jess and Kyle why they think their way is the right way. God loves Jess and Kyle too much for there not to be some positive changes in their lives as a result of this week. Twenty-four hours of traveling, and our teenagers finally arrive in Indiana. It's quite pretty around here. Oh, it's foul looking. It's all dull colors and nothing. Well, I think it's beautiful. Yeah, but you're from Sydney. You haven't seen the real life until you go to the coast. Oh, shut the fuck up. For the next seven days, our teens will have to learn to live with each other, and more importantly, the Gibson family. The toughest thing will be being told what to do and being told what to do by people I don't even know. Hello, welcome. Hi, Jess, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Hello. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. Hi, Kyle, how Hi. are you? Hi, Good to meet you. Nice to meet you, Jonathan Gibson. Kyle. <laughs> Hi. 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 This is our family. Hi. Hi. And this is Kyle. Hello, Kyle. And that's our mother-in-law, Carolyn. <laughs> well, welcome. Are you guys ready for a good time? The Gibson girls have kindly given up their rooms for Jess and Kyle. Oh, and I hope you like Hannah Montana. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Tinkerbell room. Oh! <laughs> But Jess finds nothing pretty in what she discovers next. So am I allowed to have a cigarette? I'm sorry, but they're not going to be allowed to smoke. Shit. Good morning, Mom. And that's another one of our rules. <laughs> You're not going to be able to cuss. Oh, my god. Yeah. Uh -oh. Anyways, I know that's kind of a shocker, but that is one of the rules that we're going to be enforcing this week. No. OK. <laughs> Okay. I'm not allowed to swear. That's fucking bullshit. Fuck, fuck, fuck. I don't like this. So, we can't swear. Can't smoke. We so, can't swear. Yeah. No curse, cu cussing. <laughs> fucking hell, eh? Kyle and Jess, that's just the beginning. So, essentially, they're pretty cut and dry rules. You know, we don't allow alcohol or drinking alcoholic beverages. No drugs, no cigarettes or tobacco of any kind. No pornography or pornographic material. No TV or movies over PG-13. No dirty talk. No cussing, including taking God's name in vain. No back talking or disrespect. Um, dressed modestly. That would be like, um... No, no shirts, no bellies, no too short of shorts or skirts. Dating is acceptable, but not being alone except in family rooms. So you don't have sex until you're 18? Until you're married. Married? Yeah. Right. OK. Yeah. Um, we talked to Christian about keeping his purity until he's married. And, he's um, part of me. This is a photo of my girlfriend, Desiree. We've been together for a year and eight months. When we go on dates, we have to uh, at least bring one friend with us. 
a purity ring and a pledge is where you pledge to um, remain a virgin until you get married. And uh, you should, the ring is to show that you've made that commitment. And uh, his girlfriend's made that pledge as well and has a little ring that says purity on it and stuff like oh, that. Oh, wow. And that yeah. she actually on her, on her, on her wedding finger, like. Very okay. So, yeah. So, like, back at home, I don't have rules. I do what I want. I do drugs. Um, I drink alcohol. I smoke cigarettes. I swear a lot. Sure. So your rules are going to be really, really hard for me. Yeah. Sure. Always in life you have choices, whether you're going to do the right thing or the wrong thing. And this week, being in our house with our rules, the right thing would be to obey the rules. And so, so that'll help choose whether you have the consequences or the rewards. Now for the first choice. This is bullshit. Jess and Kyle have been asked to hand over anything they've brought with them that breaks the new rules. This is the only thing. It's not even bad, so. Unless they're gonna go angry about that, I don't know. I've got some cigarettes, so I've already taken some out. I have these ones in here. I'm still gonna smoke, I don't care what they say. Thank you, guys. I was really glad that Jess brought up all those things from the beginning so we know what we're dealing with here. What they're dealing wow. with is a teenager who isn't used to being told what to do. I want to find somewhere undercover. And it takes just five minutes for Jess to try and break the rules again. Do you reckon I can still see? It's better. I'm not going to abide by their rules because you can't just quit a habit. It doesn't work like that. So, fuck them. Their time at the Gibson house. Dear Jesus, thank you for this day. Pray that you help us to have a good night's sleep. For our Aussie teenagers, it's the first night of living under strict parents with strict rules, and it's all a bit of a culture shock. Jesus, we pray before we eat and before we go to sleep. I don't I haven't really heard of people doing it in Reesby. 16-year-old Kyle is already looking for a way out. They're just so strict and it's so annoying. See, they got screwdriver holes. Who knows what? You can't move anything. Nothing moves. I don't know what to do. Oh, man. They better make something fun. If not, I'm going to be really angry. It's effed up. Oh, shit. <laughs> I can break a bed. Seven thirty any normal Sunday morning, Jess and Kyle would be sleeping off a big night out. Jessica, but not today. Jessica, in the Gibson house, Good church morning. attendance is compulsory. Rise and shine, give God the glory. <laughs> Good morning. Rise and shine. <laughs> Jocelyn, what are you wearing to church? Stuff like that. So far, there's not a lot of complaining. But that could be because Kyle's cotton onto the Gibsons' rewards or consequences style of parenting. I found that if we do the stuff, we have to do fun and stuff. And then if we do fun and stuff, there's more of an opportunity for me to meet American girls. And that's one of my goals here. <laughs> See? Yeah, you have to play it right. If the teens do as they're told, the Gibsons have promised them a trip out unsupervised. I think they're going to thoroughly enjoy our service today and the people. After that, we're going to take them and drop them off at the bowling alley with some of the teens from the church and some of Christian's friends. So it should be good. 
Amen. You may be seated. Aren't you glad we serve an awesome God today? Amen. I want to challenge you. Are you fully committed to God? If not, maybe that's the reason you walk around with doubt and discouragement and might not have that winning attitude. Waking up for church turned out to be the easy part. As we look at Samson, we think, man, how did he get this winning attitude? He was dedicated to God from the womb. My heart is a brand new song. For Jess, sticking out the service is proving just too hard. I don't care if I get in trouble, I'm just, I'm really getting sick of living like a fuckwit. I don't want to sit in church and listen to him talk about, I don't know, I don't even know what he was talking about. Couldn't give two flying fucks either. <sighs> Jess got away with a sneaky cigarette once before, but her luck is about to run out. I do want to tell you, I'd really prefer that you not walk around without talking to us. All right. Okay. And that's not um, all Kathleen's worried about. I just need to ask you if you've been smoking right now. Yeah. You did? Yeah. OK. Um, first of all, can you give me your cigarettes, please? All of them? Yeah. Oh my god, this is fucking bullshit. I'm trying to give you the chance to be honest, you know what I mean? I have my life anyways. Okay. That one we just charge. Do you have any more with you? How about the rest of your purse? Do you have any? No, I don't I don't have any more cigarettes. Do you not lie to me anymore? Mm-hmm. Can I, I'm being serious, because I, we're just straight people, and we just. The only reason why I lie, the only reason why I lie to these cigarettes, um, there's nothing else to really lie Because you want it so badly. Yeah. Don't smoke them. I am very disappointed in Jess for lying like that, but it's really not surprising. So I need to go talk with Jonathan, and we're going to talk about what the consequences are going to be for Jess, because to us, this is a very, very big deal. It's surprising that they've let me come to bowling um, because I've just been in trouble. Um, and I've deceived them and lied. Um, so, yeah, I don't, I don't know what the consequences are quite going to be. Well, Jess is about to find out. First of all, I feel like we need to learn the consequences of um, not being honest with people, and sometimes that consequence can be losing freedom and things like that too. So at least for a while, till we see how things go, I'm going to be with you pretty much everywhere you go. But there's another thing: um, we are going to be taking away the internet for a couple, at least a couple days, um, and we'll see where we're at after that, whether it will be longer or not. Are you having fun with the kids? It's all right. I don't really like bowling. You don't like bowling very much. She definitely, um, you can tell, is pretty perturbed about this, but she definitely has to learn that there are consequences. Kathleen on her tail 24 7. That's the consequence. I just I don't have any time for her. I don't want to speak to her. She's just, she's just an idiot. It's got to slide. Make it slide. And right now, 
Kyle's not, not much happier. The reason I went to church because I thought I'd be able to get like a good place to go. So I thought I'd be able to pick up chicks. And the only two chicks that are here have boyfriends and they're all like Christian and QAV and it's a bummer. Because I thought like chicks came to American bowling, because isn't that like a big thing here? But all I see is old ladies. In the Gibson house, you break the rules, you suffer the consequences. That's where they were. Okay. Good. Sixteen-year-old Jess is having her bag searched, her clothes searched, and her entire room turned upside down after she was busted for smoking and lying. Is there anything in here? Yeah. Can I check your coat pockets? Yeah. Okay, Jess. My sweet. You are sweet. Like I told you before, one of the biggest things is not lying to us. And um, I, this proved to me that you didn't the last time, and I really appreciate that. Well, I've got, the only reason why I lied is so I could smoke, so I've got Yeah, nothing, we understand that. Yeah. I've got nothing to lie about anymore because I don't have cigarettes. Right. Good, good. 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 And we'd ask that you please not um, find any way to get any this week either, OK? OK. Do we trust her? Um, how much does she weigh? <laughs> <laughs> I might trust her as much as I could throw her. Glad to be with you guys. I think we're going to have fun. And I think we're going to be a blessing. <laughs> Doing for others, you know, who can't do for themselves. Mm. Three days into their week-long stay, and the teens are about to get a taste of something the Gibson kids do every other weekend, charity work. I don't really like it. I don't like working and not getting paid for it. Today, the Gibsons aren't giving Kyle a choice. OK, guys, here we are. They have the, the food pantry over here, and over here is where they sell used clothing to the oh, poor. The oh, it's got back brakes. I don't like this one. Now, why are you riding a bike? Come on, boy. One. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Kyle will yeah, volunteer no, okay? his time to this women's shelter, if he Be likes careful. it or not. Hey, Kyle, we're, they're trying to defrost their freezer so they can be more efficient. It's correct? I'm cold, and I'm going into a freezer. So tell them what to do. Just um, get all the ice up yeah, there. Yeah, that would be great. Why can't I go, like, stack clothes, which is a lot warmer? The need is here. Don't need help stacking clothes. Now I'm seeing that he's not quite as mature as I thought he was. Put the ball down. Let's go. Keep going, keep going. Oh. Have I entertained you guys with some bike tricks? No, just spray. No bike tricks. One of the co-workers said, man, I'm, I'm about ready to pop him in the mouth. So I, I think he's a little bit smart mouth. Oh, man. Smell this. Just smell it. Come on. I know it's for good people, but, like, it's kind of gross. But a couple of hours in, Kyle decides there is an upside to all this charity work. There are other teenagers here. Yo, oh, seriously, you don't know how boring it is there. And Kyle thinks that these teens could be his ticket to freedom. I'm trying to get them to get us a lift out tonight or tomorrow. How are they not, they're not even allowed out? Yeah, they are. No, they're not. Really? Really, really. I'll talk to them. Right. I'm trying to get a lift off them. So, I don't know, I'll talk to them and see if they can come pick me up one night. Just when Jonathan stuff go to bed. I just think he's a loser. He just wants to have sex with a girl while he's over here. Um, I don't think he's got a chance with any of them. They already told me that he's not very attractive anyways, so, yeah, good luck to him. <laughs> when our teenagers get home, Jess finds out that Kyle collected more than just new friends at the women's shelter. Got switched off my pocket. You tell if you say that you got it from me, you are dead, OK? You are dead, and you have to be nice to me from now on. What do you say? Thank you. That's right. <laughs> Smoking a cigarette would mean breaking the Gibson's rules and trust again. This time, Jess is thinking twice. And it's Kyle who's about to find himself in trouble. Hello. I heard um, that you didn't say too nice of a thing to Jessica. Jessica? To Jess. You're fucking impatient, that's what he said. It didn't hurt me at all, but, you know, I know that 
he doesn't like to clean toilets and this room makes you clean toilets, so I dumped on him. She was raving on at me, but. Well, because you said it, we're going to have to have you do the toilet. Which toilet? The one you and Jess use. It'll be fine. Cleaning toilets. That's the Gibson's punishment for swearing. And if Kyle has to do that, then he's going to make sure Jess doesn't get a choice about whether or not to smoke that cigarette. Here you go, Kyle. Thanks. Thank you. When Jess finds out, the whole house will hear about it. and I was going to come back and chuck it in your face and now it's gone, OK? What happened? What happened? Go, go to your room this time. I don't like him. I don't want to be around him. We're going to have to do something about all this stuff between the two of you. And you can bet there'll be punishments involved. They're only halfway through their stay and our Aussie teenagers have turned on each other. We can't have all this conflict going on. Now Kathleen has ordered them to sit down and sort it out. I know last night we had a really crazy night. Jess, did you have stuff that you want to say? I'm sorry for making you feel disrespected. You don't do things that you're going to regret. But do I don't you? regret it. And why are you apologising if you don't regret it? Because it's the right thing to do. Kyle, hold on just a second. But if... No, don't put your, uh, I your earphones in. I don't have to hear you. Kyle. Don't put your earphones in because you don't want to listen because you can't handle it. OK, Jess. I'm going to chuck this pencil at you. No. Jess. Oh. Jess. Who the fuck do you think you are, Kyle? Honestly. You said you don't care. Oh. Oh. Give me your iPod for a second. In my house, if a kid comes and does that to another kid, there's an issue over it because... Yeah, but he's just being a crybaby. But you, we can't go down that road. You can't change Kyle, but you can change you. And the way we're going to have to do it is consequences. I'm sorry that I said those bad swear words in your house. But Parenting is not easy, but the key, I think, with kids is to, is to put the time in and the love in and being willing to discipline, but um, with that time and love. Both Jess and Kyle are starting to accept their new rules and the consequences that go with them. Like, I now respect Jonathan and Kathleen a little bit more because they actually sat down with us and tried to figure it out. Like, normally, my and pop would be like, yeah, just shut up, get over it. Teachers would be like, oh, don't do this, it's bad, you shouldn't be doing that, rah, rah, rah. But they actually sat down and spoke to us. It's a good start. But the Gibsons aren't the only people who'd like a little respect from these teenagers. Hi, Tess. We have a surprise for you. Oh, it's a letter you. from your mom. <gasps> oh, mom! <laughs> I think I'm going to cry. <laughs> Dear Jess, I can't believe you went to America and left your hair straightener on. <laughs> I wanted to write to you because there is so much I need to say. <laughs> and so many words left unsaid with our busy with lives. With our busy lives. I haven't been able to stop crying since you left. <laughs> there are tears of sadness, joy and pride. I'm sad for the fights we have. And your words set in anger. And tears of pride because no matter what you do, where you are or who you, who you are with, I am proud that you are my daughter. A true blessing, which whether you realise or not, I embrace your love and existence every day. Wow, that's really nice. Quite often, I see myself in you, making a lot of the mistakes that I made in my teenage years. Sweetheart, you don't know how many times I lie awake at night watching you sleep and you look just like an angel. So innocent, it breaks my heart to see you on the brink of destroying your life. Perhaps this time apart will be good for both of us. 
and perhaps we could look at this as a fresh start. I love you with all my heart. You're my world, my life, my Jess. Be happy. All my love, Mum. It's lovely. I think the way I speak to my mum, that's the big issue. That's the real big issue. I think I've been very aggro towards her. Um, but I don't realise that at the time. I do. I do think that when I come back, we can have a fresh start, hopefully. I think this is just the first step of me growing up a little bit more. A week-long stay in Indiana with the Gibson family is almost over for Jess and Kyle. But Jonathan's going to give it one last shot at getting the charity message through. We want our kids just to be encouragers and we want them to think about others um, as much as they think about them, themselves. Ten trays, just like this. Today, Jess and Kyle, along with the other Gibson children, will be feeding the homeless. So we have to be fast because they get, they've only got 20 minutes. Um, here they come now, so they get pretty angry when they don't get their food. So I'm a bit nervous, but um, yeah, hopefully it goes okay. Tell them have a good day, enjoy lunch, and if they get smart and say, what's this? You know, what's your free lunch? Okay. <laughs> what is that move? There you go, enjoy your food. Enjoy your food. Have a good day. Underwear. Really? No, I ain't having it. What, well, they can't see my underwear? Or? Well, you know, you don't want them seeing your underwear, sweetheart. Can I get my pair of Here, have a good one. I've got a Michigan jumper too. See ya. See ya. I think Jess has a real heart for, for people. And so it, it was able to really start coming out in this situation as she was talking to the different guys passing by. Bye bye. I don't think it comes natural for 16-year-olds to be real giving and caring. I myself at 16 cared about me. I wanted to know what everybody could give me, not what I could give them. So I know it's just it's just hard. You need somebody to help teach you and turn that around for you. One more try. Look, you're already in charge. Good girl. They seem like all nice people. But... I know well, they are. Good people have problems. Yeah. I've had a pretty tough start in life, but these guys, I come nowhere close to these guys. So your mom was doing drugs? Yeah, she was. But Nana Pop have always been around the corner, so I've always been able to go there. That's cool. That's yeah. Cool. Sorry your mom went there, though. Yeah, I know. I, I, I think it was for the better, but because she was getting too deep into drugs. Are you angry with her? No. No, that's good. That's I, good. I'm a bit disappointed in her, but... That's about it. You know, it can just help you to be a better dad. Mm. I plan on being. It made me feel quite good that um, I was helping out people that were less fortunate than me. Like, if we had one of these places at home, I would, I would definitely help out after seeing this today. I feel like his heart's kind of being changed a little bit in regards to charity-type work, where a couple of days ago, he was like, I just work for myself, <laughs> you know what I mean? And so... I think it's starting to get changed a little bit, and he's starting to see the need that, hey, we if we all work together, maybe we can help some of those that are hurting around. I'll leave here today knowing that I've done something to help someone and other people, so nice, warm feeling inside. Waiting back at the Gibson house, this time there's a letter for Kyle letter for from me. his grandparents. Really? Yeah, isn't that cool? Do I have to read it? Uh, yeah, you have to read it. <laughs> I'll leave you alone. We would like to see a real change in your attitude towards Nan and me, especially Nan. <laughs> I, know I know that, that Nan, Nan yells a lot, lot, but why? As I've said before, Nan does so much for you guys and asks for very little in return. Like walk the dog, clean your room, water the garden, and that's about it. For some reason, you seem to resent being asked, and I don't understand. 
just the way you speak to us, when you do speak to us, is often with aggression that I feel is quite unnecessary. I'll talk with Nan and ask her if she will change the way she acts to you. I think she feels that you are a little boy instead of a young man. Let's try when you return for you to have a little bit more patience, better communications, and sit down and talk to us more. Perhaps we should sit down on a Sunday morning with a pot of tea and just talk to each other. We're not ogres, you know. A cuddle for Nan and even for me would be appreciated and it would make us feel good. Do yourself and us proud, behave, and remember, you have manners. See you soon, Nana Pop. Because of his mum's drug problems, Kyle moved in with his grandparents when he was a little boy. I, I wonder myself every like morning when I wake up and stuff, like, what would it be like if my mum never touched a drug? Where would I be? What would I be doing? I do appreciate what they've done for me. When I was three, I think they took in a big responsibility of taking me and my brother on, knowing that mum their daughter and their son took different paths, knowing that they didn't want me and Shoulder to grow up like that. So it was a really big thing for them, I reckon. It does make me happy that they took me on and they were willing to. But now, because I'm older, then they're still trying to take, treat me like a little kid, which is, not, is like another reason we fight. I, I wish it was different, like every day, but it's not going to change just like that, so. OK, guys, I want to talk to you real quick. It's our teenager's Everybody last night with the Gibsons. Over the week, they've had plenty of punishments. But tonight, finally, they've earned a reward. Have a great time. But be respectful, and we'll see you back around 9.45. Jess and Kyle are allowed out, without parents. All the people around. A week ago, it was really hard for me to imagine being able to let um, the kids out unsupervised. Up in the back! But uh, the kids have done a really good job of earning our trust. We're really excited because we feel like we can trust them to just go and have good, clean fun. Oh, I'm so happy I actually came here. There's so many, like, hot cheerleaders. It, this is a brilliant night to spend the last night. After seven days living under strict parents with strict rules, 16-year-old Jess is getting ready to go home to Australia. The main thing I learnt was about my mum. And that's the thing I take back with me the most. Just that I don't have to be so cruel and nasty. She doesn't, she doesn't really deserve it. Um, yeah, so I just, I just, I just realised how much I... I miss her and how easy I really do have it. There's just so many good things ahead for your life. I just don't want to see any of the other junk destroy it. And so to really uh, think about that when you're making your decisions. And you've touched our lives this week and our kids. We love you, baby. We just think you're an awesome young man, and we really want to um, encourage you when you go back to uh, to just think about some of the ways we talked about treating people, even if we don't feel like it, and even sometimes if people are doing the wrong thing, you know, to um, to really try to get in their shoes and realize that they do care about you and love you. The Gibson family is just so trusting that. I know it kind of made me feel special because someone actually trusted me not to do anything bad. And I don't really get that. People don't really trust me that much. 
Hey, you're welcome. I'll be back. Calm down. Okay. You're always welcome. Bye. Bye. We love you. Love you. Yeah. It was hard to get used to, but um, it was also really good to live the way another person would live. One thing I'd have to say is the Gibson family is just a loving, respecting family that is going to bring their kids up really well. Yeah, I'll come back. Back on Queensland's Sunshine Coast, Carl's grandparents are hopeful they'll see some change in the young man who walks through their door. I've missed him, yeah. We haven't missed all the noise and the loud music and all the rest of it, but we have missed him. I hope that he's learned something. I hope that he appreciates what he's got here. If it has been really strict, he might think, wow, um, I'm on a good wicket here and maybe um, I should treat Nan and Pop a little, um, little, little, bit little better than what I have done in the past. I would like to have a better relationship because I respect them, like, heaps. If they can meet my brother on. I feel like they'll still be there, no matter what. But now, like, it's up to me Hi. how I want my future to turn out like. Welcome home. <laughs> Hi. 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 Give me a cuddle. <laughs> this is the first Join time the Carl's hugged his grandparents Hi. in years. Did you like the family? I, I got in trouble for swearing. What'd you say? Shit. Hmm? What'd they say? Clean toilet. <laughs> <laughs>